Mr. Eggleton. The Canadian Real Estate Association represents over 125,000 realtors across the country. However, we're here today on behalf of home buyers, property owners, and their tenants. Bill C-45 will not directly harm realtors, but it will impact their customers. I will focus on one particular element of the bill, the cultivation of cannabis in dwellings, homes, and apartments. Indoor cultivation can cause damage that will result in increased expenses, especially for landlords, who will then have to pass on these costs to tenants. This will raise rents for Canadians and will disproportionately impact lower income Canadians. The stated purpose of the bill is to protect public health and public safety, and yet the, legis the legislation ignores evidence that growing cannabis indoors can be hazardous to the home and health of homeowners. Last month, an agency funded by the Public Health Agency of Canada released a report confirming that indoor cultivation and processing of cannabis can introduce and exacerbate environmental health risks in a home. And just two weeks ago, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities singled out personal cultivation of cannabis as the most problematic issue towns and cities will face following the passage of this legislation. In fact, municipalities have struggled for years with major problems caused by the legal home cultivation of marijuana for medicinal purposes. The legislation will allow individuals to, to grow four plants in the home. On the surface, this sounds moderate, but the legislation doesn't limit the number of crops or the size of each plant. With proper irrigation and lighting, an, an individual could grow very large plants and harvest three or four crops a year. Yields could reach over five kilograms a year. At that level of production, four plants have the potential to cause damage to a dwelling with associated health consequences to residents. Health Canada and the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation both place indoor air quality as one of the most important elements to maintaining a healthy home. The federal government is spending millions of dollars researching indoor air quality, building and construction standards. Yet the documented risks associated with increased levels of mold, spores and fungus when growing cannabis indoors seem to have been ignored in the proposed legislation. Exposure to mold and fungus can cause a range of respiratory diseases. Senators need to consider the impact and hardship to people living in housing units in proximity to air pollution from this activity. Contamination from pesticides and fertilizers can lead to further issues with air quality and these chemicals can also pose a risk to children. How many thousands of apartments have shared ventilation systems? Many realtors have witnessed firsthand the damage done to homes where cannabis has been cultivated without adequate ventilation or appropriate electrical infrastructure. Improper installation and the use of grow up equipment, including high wattage lights and irrigation, pose safety risks. Growing four large plants in a room with heat from lights and excess moisture without adequate ventilation creates risks. I hope you will also hear from fire chiefs like Surrey's Len Garris, as many have been vocal about the consequences, including fatalities, they have witnessed from these hazards. We question if personal cultivation is even necessary. Canada has the production capacity to deal with new demand for recreational cannabis thanks to a well-funded, well-capitalized cannabis industry. The company operating in Smith Falls, Ontario, the former Hershey Chocolate Factory, is now employing more people than Hershey ever did. After legalization, most Canadians will have ready access to cannabis that has been grown in safe conditions, in stores and online. Arguably, there will be no clear need to grow your own. Senators could reduce the risks associated with the legalization of home cultivation with a simple amendment to Part 1, Division 1, stating that notwithstanding anything to the contrary in this Act, an individual is prohibited from cultivating, propagating, or harvesting any cannabis plants in a dwelling house until the Governor and Council, by order, declares that the province in which the dwelling house is situated has adopted codes and standards for cultivation, propagation, and harvesting of cannabis plants in a dwelling house. In other words, you need regulation prior to the implementation of home grow. This would be a prudent and responsible approach, one that respects the rights of provinces, and allows the ultimate intent of the Act. 
The federal government should also provide a framework available to provinces, territories, and municipalities on regulations and guidelines for the safe home cultivation of cannabis. These guidelines would be based on evidence and designed to mitigate the hazards that are already being experienced. If the purpose is to protect public health and public safety, then these provisions need to be in place before home cultivation is permitted. Canadians voted for the legalization of cannabis, but it is a huge undertaking. I ask you to consider the interests of people, young and old, who will be affected by home cultivation. What problem does home growing solve? And yet, how many problems does it create? If we're going to legalize cannabis, we need to roll this out, pardon the pun, I couldn't resist, in a careful, in a careful, sensible way that will protect vulnerable Canadians. Thank you. Thank you very much.